All right, this should be a quick one. I picked up uh, on an impulse from eBay. Of course, it's the worst thing you can do is shop for reloading stuff online. Um, I picked up this AccuLine scale, and it's it's their uh, budget-friendly version of the Lyman stuff that they used to offer. And what was wrong with this? It would lose its zero over time. And it was like, well, if you're using the same pan and arm and all that it, it you shouldn't have a problem but i've i figured out what was the problem the knives are fine everything else is still you know calibrated to the pan but on the back side of this there's a tiny little hole right there and that would keep this slider from moving so like here you got a notch that you can you know tangibly put in one little grooves and it won't it won't move but of course when you know the scale actuates back and forth back and forth few times this would just slightly keep bumping there's nothing to stop it so the quick fix for this is nothing but a paper clip just take a paper clip cut it to size and just glue it right into that little tiny hole and then um, if you need to make adjustments to the pan uh, the easiest way is just take a uh, shotgun shell open get one of those uh, uh, lead balls smash it flat with a hammer and just with a file or pliers or whatever, just, you know, keep shaping off. Or you can even take a piece of paper and just, you know, rub that little piece of lead on it. Like your, you know, pencil, lead. you know, how you can sharpen that with a piece of paper. Um, you can just get it to the correct size. And then there's a little tiny screw here on the pan. So you just take that out. Um, you put it in the extra weight or take the weight out, whatever you need to zero this plus this one pan only works for the one pan. Um, it doesn't matter. If you change this pan later, you only need to do this once. You need to calibrate the pan to the uh, the arm here and keep everything as one unit. But yeah, that's the quick, quick and dirty little secret is if you get a, a scale that's drifting, make sure you get that little pin that keeps it in place. So I'm going to glue it together and see if it works. All right, so all I did was uh, glue that little tiny pin in and you hardly have to put a drop of super glue on there. You don't want to really adjust any uh, weight too dramatically. And uh, what I was talking about with the pan here, um, you just unscrew the, the bottom of it and then there's all these little tiny lead shot uh, BBs in here. And this is what they originally calibrated it with. So as long as you have everything in there you can add or subtract weight for whatever pan you want and then let's test it so you'll see that it, everything's on zero and it settles down to zero again it used to not do that so it stays at its fixed position here it doesn't drift that's also at zero and we're back at zero again so this does work and uh, for the cost of a, a chunk of paper clip and a little bit of super glue it worked their complaint was that it would drift over time and you can see that they bought it new and it sat in the box so long the sticker actually came off so i, I believe them that um that was the issue from the factory it had to been or somewhere in shipping the little pin just fell out and it's just been sitting in a box ever since because i never trusted it so if you get a, a scale like this that keeps drifting, just uh, give it a once over and see if there's a tiny pin missing, like this case. So, all right, thanks for watching. Hope that helps. All right, just a few more suggestions that you can do to your scale. Uh, when leveling it, make sure the table is level, of course, um, and level your, your scale to the table itself. Uh, what I mean by that is this little adjustment foot that all of these scales have. Uh, it kind of you want to find the neutral zone of uh, where they sit. Um, this scale is kind of a poor example because everything's at different angles. The only angle that's kind of flat is this right here. So you want that parallel with the table uh, before zeroing your pan out. That way, everything kind of finds its little happy place. Um, the same thing can be seen up here on these other reading scales. The base of the scale is basically parallel to the table and everything else is zeroed out. You can see it on both of them. 
Um, the next thing, if, if your scale is too hard to read, you can always just color in with marker anything that, you know, to make it easier. Up here with this uh, scale with the magnifying glass, it's very hard to read the 10 scale. Um, I added green marker. So that was one easy way to keep the, uh, the contrast up. Um, it was easier with the, the black on white lettering, but I found that this in particular was old oil scale was way more accurate than the uh, magnetically dampened one over there. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can add a chunk of foam right at the base for, so that the, the scale hits the, the foam rather than the, the base of the scale. It'll dampen the noise. So that's uh, another tip and trick that you can do. Uh, another one is just make plastic covers. Put them over your, over your scales. That way all the dust and dirt doesn't settle into your knives and it, it keeps everything cleaner. Especially these old, old oil scales. They just attract everything that sticks to them. So if you can keep everything off, better. All right, that's just a few uh, tips and tricks. One more. Make sure that uh, when you're using a scale, keep the uh, the scales up so that your eyesight is uh, dead on. If you're reading down into a scale like this one on the table, you can you know drift through numbers just a little bit. So other than that, keep them off, and it it keeps them out of danger if they're raised up. That way, if you're working on something here, you're not bumping into them or knocking the zero off. So hope that helps. Have a good one.